he reckons, where the banks are getting eroded away, that there's Roman pottery to be found. Well, I've I've been down there loads of times, and I've I've never I've, I've not found any. Uh, no, don't believe that. Yeah, exactly. Oh, th thanks. Hey, my God, if Bill can Bill again, Bill and Gary Tiley, that'd be a good one, Rich. Yeah. And he was having a good look. He was having oh, a we... good look at your book. Oh, you've had a good look at the book, and you haven't no, even paid. I didn't. I didn't open it. I gave it to him. Oh, right. Still in your wrapper. Oh, still in my wrapper. All right. Still in the envelope. Still in the envelope. Oh, yeah. that's good. That's good. What What did he say? Did he say thank you? Yeah. Oh, you know. He, oh, he's he, gonna have a good look at this. He He, he said, uh, "Yeah." The question oh. is: Is his book thicker than my book, or is my book thicker than his? I don't know. Is his bigger? Ah, but it's not as thick. <laughs> Ah, uh, Barry unearthed. Oh, okay, fair enough. A few well, I've dodgy. Got your, I've got your copy here. All right then. Well done. Thanks, Richard. <laughs> right, folks. Anyway, let, let's let's get into it. So uh, today we're going to be looking at uh, the Romans. And hang on, we got some other voices on you now. Um. Right, so um, oh, I've, I've, oh God, stop talking about size. Right, uh, we're going to look at the defeat of the Roman legion of Roman legions of Varus um, in the Teutonburg Forest, and um, and that's probably the wrong pronunciation as well, Bill. Um, yes, every, every we all, if Kathy was here, she would she'd be correcting me about the right pronunciation. Um, um, Arminius, Arminus, um, who was the who was the guy who led the Roman legions astray to be destroyed, and Varus to probably be um, tortured and executed at the end of this um, terrible um, episode in the Roman Empire. We're going to look at that now. So we're going to look at some images, um, and this is something you don't often come across. A map of where the Roman legions are to be found. Well, we've actually got a little bit of a clearer one, but up in up there, um, it says the legion of the seventeenth, um, um, and the legion of the eighteenth, um, and the legion of the nineteenth. These were the these were three legions that were completely lost under the command of Varus in the Teutonburger Forest um and it was it, this has always been something that rome would always remember and it was something that um varus varus by all accounts was probably not cut out to lead the roman legions into uh, the forest in the first place um and i i've been i've been looking a great deal into military geniuses and so on um from the second world war um and you see sort of parallels about um people who seem to get to high office but they're not fit for purpose and this is this is something you know virus virus was something like that but he did have some military skills but he was also known as um a murderer um he in his in his campaigns as a governor um 2000 Jews were uh, put to death. So, you know, there's 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 different ways of looking at Varus, but we we're, we're looking at the sort of campaign a little bit because we we in an hour you can't really um do this subject justice. But sort of leading on from Spartacus, I thought I'd look at this. Um and then we sort of um go a little bit back in time from Varus from 9 AD next week when we look at um Vertingetorix. So, um, and we're going to look at the Julius Caesar campaigns then after that as well. So you've got those three legions. And, and, and one thing that you can clearly see about that map is when you take away the three, those three legions, uh, you know, you, you, you don't have many Roman legions in the field at any one time. Usually about 20 to 25 Roman legions were the maximum strength of the Roman military to sort of patrol and to control this entire empire. 
and you can see that um, about nine nine AD when when this is looking at this, you've got three legions in in Hispania, Spain, and the majority of the legions are banked up. There you go, they're banked up along the Germanicus frontier. Um, there's a legion of the Praetorian in Italy, uh, one legion in Africa, two legions in Egypt, four legions in the east, um, and then along the frontier, Romania and sort of Greece, you have two, four, six, seven legions. But you've got this, this bank of legions along the Germanicus front, uh, the 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 um, um, uh, the frontier of Germania. Germanicus is the name of, of a general that would be very successful after Varus, um, who was in fact the father of a future Roman emperor, um, whose name will be mentioned, Caligula. So, if we if we want to move on a little bit and sort of um, and this, so one one thing about Rome, it's all based on a sense of pride, and Rome is. The, the idea of Rome and the embodiment of, of Rome is 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 truly enshrined in this sense of identity and something you identify with. It's a bit, you know, in a way, being within the Roman Empire is a little bit like being in a political party, right? Um, you know, you, you will do anything for a political party as as long as things are going right. Um, and you believe in that political party as as long as things are going right. But when things go wrong, you sort of think, oh, right, I'm not going to be involved in this. And you have a few little defeats and things start to go wrong. That's a bit like the Roman Empire, actually. Um, Ro Rome, the Roman Empire is, is sort of enshrined on this basis of pride and tradition. Um, Romulus and Remus, uh, that, in, that enshrined date in my head, 753 BC. There it is. Romulus and Remus being suckled by the she-wolf. Now, this is at the Capitoline Hill uh, Museum in Rome. Um, and it's, it's believed that this might actually be a, med um, a medieval fake. But the bronze itself, again, is everything that you would see on Roman coins associated with Rom Romulus and Remus. Um, and, and when we look at the end of the Roman Empire, the, the, the name of the last Roman Empire happened to be Romulus as well. So when the Roman Empire in the West collapses in, in the year 476, the last Roman Empire is Romulus, happened to be the first Roman Empire, um, first leader, because he didn't have em emperors back in 753. But the, the, last, the first and last leaders of the Roman world happened to be Romulus. Very interesting, that. So again... Varus and the loss of the three Roman legions is, is, is something very important. It's not a footnote in the Roman world. Spartacus could, you know, the, the uprising associated with Spartacus could be seen as a little bit of a footnote in the Roman world. It can be sort of brushed under the carpet. And you could brush Boudicca under the carpet as well, because, you know, when Spartacus is gone, a couple of other um, servile wars, um, and you can get on with things. And, and, and it was very similar when you look at uh, Boudicca. But the Germans had an absolute fear. Uh, they, they, they had a, they had a outstanding fear um, of, of the Germans. They, they, they were petrified of the Germans. The, the Germans. the Germans at the end of the day took three Roman legions away from the Roman state in 9 AD. And, and Rome, Rome never, ever really recovered from that. Um, they, they were always fighting along the Germanic frontier. It was only in the likes of Marcus, Marcus Aurelius and Andy's going to hit, not Andy, Bill's going to hear it again. Um, the film Gladiator, right, which is based on the reign of Marcus Aurelius um, and then Commodus. That, that, that's, that's fighting along the frontier of, of Germany, um, where, where the where the Romans were able to defeat the, the likes of the Britons and, and um, the Hispanic people, and, and then they were able to defeat the Gauls and the Egyptians and the Africans and the Greeks and lots of Turkish people and so on. Um, they were never, ever able to defeat the Germans. And this is an interesting thing. The, the, the idea, oh my God, I need to do more images. The, 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 the idea that um, the Germans could never, ever be defeated is something that the Germans actually believed in the first, the Second World War. War um, when the when the Germans defeated the French um, um, in in 1871, 
uh, against Napoleon III. Um, and the Germans were part of defeating the French um, underneath, uh, uh, under the banner of the coalition at Leipzig in, in 1813. It all stems, stems to this idea that the Germans are indestructible. You can never destroy the Germans when, in fact, uh, we, we saw that the Germans came a cropper in the Second World War. Germans were never defeated in the first, by the way, but they were eventually defeated in the Second World War. This, this monument is associated with the great victory of the Germans in a Totenberg forest. Um, and this is a great monument. Hermann, Hermann, with, with a sort of um, wings on his helmet. Um, Hermann um, is, is, is that archetypal um, damsel, archetypal male damsel in distress that, that, that rules and is able to defeat all the enemies of ancient Germany itself. And, um, and when you think about it, Hermann is the victor that King Arthur never was or, or King Arthur could always be. Remember that. One one thing that um, one thing is is it's it's always you know in 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 victory there's always that da, na, 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 na. Um, do you know what I mean it was that school playground thing always this throughout the rest of the Roman world we are the ones we we you you're always going to fear us and in many ways in many ways when you look at when you look at the the, the eventual defeat of Rome it's at the hands of the Germans as well. Uh, when we look at the peoples coming into the Roman Empire, like the Goths and like the Visigoths, um, and you, you, you're looking at all these people and they're coming from the frontier that Germany always, uh, the frontier that Rome always wished to um, expand. Um, and they, they, they never really did. They never really did. And... If, if, if the Roman Empire had managed to defeat the Germans and managed to... The, the, the Germans were the Russians of the day. You can never defeat the Russians. Um, it, it, this, this, was a, this was what... Um, this is what uh, Napoleon um, came up against. Um, if you manage to defeat the Russians, you're going to have another army behind them. And you defeat that army, you're going to have another army behind them. And that's exactly what the Germans were up against um, themselves in the Second World War. So, so uh, the, the Germans were the Russians of the age of Rome, if you, if you can get that analogy. This, this sort of, this wonderful by Otto Albert Koch, 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 um, Otto um, Albert Koch, um, this, this illustration of this great victory over the Romans. And it's very likely that you wouldn't have had a battlefield like this. Um, you know, these, these great sort of um, um, Germanic berserker type individuals going into battle, fighting against the Romans. But obviously, um, this was a great wooded landscape. So they wouldn't, this wouldn't have been a scene of um, a victory by the Germans over the Romans. It was a lot of woodland fighting. And there you go, the horns on the helmet. You can't, you can't, you can't deny that. Um, but and the wings on the helmets and, and and all that so again this sort of reminder this this reminder we got we got to get into the Tutenberg forest in a few moments the the reminder this this is this is the breaking the chains at the battle of leipzig the the, the battle of the nations against um the battle of the nations against um, napoleon and, and napoleon's defeat at the battle of leipzig Germania's chains are now broken and the German people are now released, all stemming back to the days of this moment that Rome was defeated. Um, it, it really gave the Germans confidence. You, 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 you saw that in the Second World War when, when the Germans um, just, just walked over the British army and the French army um, in the Second World War. They had this massive confidence and they, they felt they could conquer the world. Um, and this this is how the Germans felt when they when they defeated the German when they defeated the Romans, um, and it would always be a thorn in the Roman side. SPQR, um, base as as we know, Senatus Populus Romanus, um, basically at the command of the Senate, the Popular Senate of ancient Rome that that we see on on Roman standards as they as they march into battle, as you see on Roman buildings 
Um, th these these very four letters, S, P, Q, R, um, and the other three letters as well, A, U, C, which A, A V, C, A, U, C, which basically means at the foundation of the city of Rome, Aberve Condita, the moment of 753, when Romulus and Remus um, is, is said to be the founders of the Roman state. But SPQR could not save the Roman legions when they were up against Arminius. Um, this is this is an epitaph associated with Marcus um, Callius. Marcus Callius. Now this is this is quite legendary when we think and when we analyze what's going on with the Teutonburg um, Forest. Um, so the Battle of Teutonburg Forest. Um, described as the Varian disaster, the Varian disaster by Roman historians took place in the Teutonburg forest in, in basically the north central heart of modern day Germany as it stands today. The Germanic peoples ambushed three Roman legions and their ex auxiliaries led by Publius Quintilius Varus. Um, and actually, strangely enough, I always say this, I always say this, and I may not have said this for a while. The only way to defeat Rome is from within. You can only, and actually, this is, this is, this doesn't conflict with what I've already said. The Arminius was actually trade, but trained, trained by the Romans. He, he was, he was actually, a, he was, he was, he was taken um, in chains from his father as, as a, um, as a hostage he was chained by the he was trained by the romans he became a roman citizen he had a roman military education and that roman military education um uh, by of, of of a german arminius because he was he was german blood he was a hostage he was he was given all the he was able to wander around rome he was he was in the roman army he, he knew it all and that those skills those ideas that that were were in his mind were the same ideas that he used to defeat varus so in other words, in other words, it was a Roman defeating Rome. And in fact, I always look at that date of 410 as well, when, when, when we're looking at Rome itself being finally um, sacked by somebody who had aligned alongside the Romans, the final sacking um, of Rome itself, the final capture of Rome itself was, was captured by somebody who had been trained by the Romans, you know, it's it's always you you it's 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 that those fifth colonists that were within Rome were what defeated Rome eventually every single time, except you could actually say that the Gauls actually captured Rome um, about um, three hundred years before this date, um, AD um, AD nine, um, and that, but that's 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 the only occasion that. Um, without is not within so varus it varus itself is um you know a, a germanic officer um um arminius was able to defeat varus the teutonburg forest is is commonly seen as one of the most the most important defeats in roman history bringing the triumphal end of the expansion under augustus to an a, 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 basically augustus is said to have wandered the halls of the Capitoline Hill in, in, in Rome itself, um, lost. Um, yeah. Wait a minute. Okay. Oh, here we go. Uh, it's said that um, Augustus, Emperor Augustus, would wander the corridors, um, talking to himself, mumbling, I want my three legions back. Where are my three legions? Varus, bring me back my three legions. Um, and it probably led to the eventual demise of Augustus. Um, it, Augustus, Augustus believed in a different idea than um, his predecessor. And we know who his predecessor was. Octavian Augustus, his predecessor, was in fact Julius Caesar. He was a friend of Julius Caesar. He knew Julius Caesar, right? Um, he fought alongside Julius Caesar. He knew, he knew, he felt what Julius Caesar did was was not exactly the way you should create an empire. Constantly conquering and defeating and putting the likes of verting Getterix in chains and, and, and all the rest of it, right? That wasn't the way to be, right? Um, Augustus thought that what we need is the a Pax Romana, Roman peace. What we're going to do, we're going to be nice to the Germans and in return, um, they're going to be nice to us. In return, they are going to take on the idea of Rome 
um, and everything's going to be a nice box of chocolates. Arminius knew all that, and he knew the way to defeating Rome was to use all that, all those nice things against the Romans. And bas basically, the Romans were actually arming um, the, the soldiers that would be used to defeat Rome in the Teutonburg Forest in the first place. So the the outcome the outcome of the Teutonburg Forest campaign was uh, to dissuade the Romans from their ambition of conquering Germania. And, and is this considerably one of the most important events in European history? It changed history. You know, we talk, we talk about the moment of change in history, but before we talk about the moment of change in history, this wonderful plaque in front of us, this is a cenotaph to Marcus Callius, who was the first centurion of the 18th Roman Legion. And the 18th Roman Legion, as we know, was wiped out alongside the... Um, uh, 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 alongside the other two legions that were alongside it, and basically it was a um, this guy Marcus Callius. He was a first centurion of the 18th Roman Legion, um, and on that description it basically says, "Fell in the War of Varus, Bello Variano." Um, it basically does read to Marcus Callius. You can see the writing there, Callius son of Titus, of the Lemonian district from Bologna, first centurion of the 18th legion. And amazingly enough, now that this, would, this is a feat for anyone in the modern military as well, he was nearly 54 years old when he, when he was killed. Now, you know, we, 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 talk, we talk about dedication to um, service. You don't get many people in the British Army lasting more than 20 years now, 25 years at most. Um, now, this guy must have served in the Roman legions. Um, he must have enlisted when he was about 18 years old. So you can imagine that he had 35 years service. He was coming probably to the end of his maximum service. You can't even serve in the British Army for more than 35 years. Um, this guy was at the end of his service and he and he and he died. It said he fell in the Varian War, basically the Teutonburg Forest. His freed man's bones may be interred here. Publius Callius, son of Titus of the Lemonian district, his brother erected this monument. Um, now this this was erected in Lower Saxony, and obviously, you know. Um, that sort of within the bounds of of Roman occupation, but other than that, most of Germany was was most. It was it was like the, the Germans have never been happy with anyone ruling over them. The German the Germans have to rule over themselves, as we can obviously see today. And the idea of Germany wanting to be the the predisperser of of superiority in Europe. Um, goes all the way down to this period, this 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 idea that they can never ever be de defeated. There there were there were moments there were moments that um, there were moments within the reign of Tiberius, the the, the next Roman lead, lead uh, the next Roman leader, the second Roman emperor Tiberius, and Germanicus, who was actually the the father of Caligula, um, would enjoy some success. Um, campaigning against the Germans, but this was border success. This this was this was not the conquest of Germania that Varus was meant to be undertaking, um, and nothing of the like would happen for another hundred um, and fifty odd years until the reign of Marcus Aurelius. At which point it would be too late to expand the Roman Empire because the Roman Empire was critically overexpanded um, in history. And, and, and again, this is another thing. I, 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 didn't, I didn't know this following fact. As we're talking about the Germans, we may as well give you this following fact. I, I, I've only been learning recently um, that if Germany hadn't have invaded Russia in the Second World War, about a year or two late, later, the German economy would have collapsed um, and Germany would have gone into a civil war. And that's a big reason why the Germans invaded Russia. Um, in other words, what we're talking about is when empires want to expand, they've got to constantly keep expanding. This is the point. Uh, Germany wasn't Germany. Uh, um, going back to Rome now, that's Germany. But back to Rome as, as a comparison, Rome itself, because Rome didn't continually expand. 
by the time of Marcus Aurelius, because it hadn't really expanded for some years, um, it was a feint to try and conquer Germany. It was too late. They, they should have done it there and then um, within the reign of Augustus in 9 AD, but they absolutely failed. And again, um, this, this idea of Romanitus, bring, bring in the idea of Pax Romana as they did to, to uh, peacefully in, in lots of ways to Roman Britain, um, eventually the Roman Empire would be invaded by hordes and hordes and hordes um, from um, over the border from Germany itself. So the word decisive Germanic victory, this is decisive. This, this is, you, you, we're in, in history books, if you look at something like the American Civil War, you, you look at battles and it says um, Confederate victory or Union victory, Cold Harbor Confederate victory. Uh, a year, uh, uh, within a year, the, the Confederacy would be over. It might have been a Confederate victory at Cold Harbor, but the Union Army would eventually win the war. Um, um, uh, first Bull Run, Second Bull Run, Manassas Junction, all Confederate victories, but eventually um, the Confederacy would lose. And and when you look at um, the, this this point of the the victory at, um, uh, with Varus, a uh, victory over Varus in 9 AD. Um, it was a decisive victory over the Germans by the by the Germanic people. Decisive, it would be so de decisive it would be remembered forever. But um, the the battle in the Teutoburg Forest, and I'm going to say it, was one of the most pivotal points in European history. It was one of the most um, um, major events in European history. Um, it was one of the, the, the it's one of the greatest military victories of all of all history. Uh, to be able to defeat the Roman, okay, I know we, we mentioned about Spartacus defeating the Romans, but we don't talk about that, do we? This, 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 was, this was on the hymn sheet. Rome didn't fall after Spartacus. Rome couldn't expand after Teutonburg Forest. That's the two big differences. Um, what, what, what we've got is, is that the cavalry was wiped out. The the um, the cavalry squadrons um, with Varus were completely wiped out. Six um, auxiliary cohorts they they all disappeared. Three complete Roman legions. We're looking at wait for it up to twenty three thousand men, an unknown combatant wiped out. So we're talking about a force of uh, maybe up to twenty five thousand wiped out <coughs> overnight. There were survivors. There were survivors, but most of those survivors returned back to their barracks with tails between their legs, wanting to be just, um, just retire, right? Um, we don't know what, we don't know what the levels of um, death rate was in regards to the Germanic people, but it was, it was quite considerably high as well. It, it's likely that there may have been up to 15,000 dead on the side of Arminius. <clears throat> but then again, it's, it's like many of these things, isn't it? They could, they, the, the Germans kept, putting men and women into the line over and over again and eventually um, the the army of Varus would be would be worn down right so so a bit of the bit of the background is that um, just just try and just chuck the background in there um, the, the, the 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 Romans wanted to make a claim over you know, you know Germany and there was this constant there was this constant thing that um, you know, th this is an important point. After his return from Rome, Arminius became a trusted advisor to Varus. So in other words, Arminius went into his people and basically said, look, boys and girls, take Rome on board. And he was going, right, I've had my fingers crossed, right? We could defeat Rome, right? Give it a few years. I was a hostage, right? The Romans trained me. We'll give it three years, right? And then we'll defeat the Romans. And they're all going, there's no way we can defeat the Romans. And he basically said, as I've already said, we are able to defeat the Romans because I've been trained by the Romans. It's only somebody who knows about the Romans that can actually defeat them. I know about the Romans because they, they've taught me everything I know. I even I, I can even speak Latin. And do you know what? That numpty virus actually trusts me. So in other words, it, it, it's a bit it's a bit like this, right? If you If you want to look at this, it's a bit like having... Um, I don't know, um, Winston Churchill as, as Hitler's uh, military advisor. Do you know what I mean? This is what we're talking about. So Arminius, who was the enemy, but Varus didn't know, um, 
virus didn't know until the very moment of his own death um and, and basically Arminia said if you come this way right come this way down here just just don't go that way come this way no 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 virus Arminius was going look just come this way just keep going and and slowly but surely um virus couldn't work out why, why numbers of his men were um um uh, you know we we they, after the battle, for example, um, if we give you, give you, what I've got to do is, is give you a, a, a bit more detail. Um, uh, let's just sort of look at some of these plans, a little, little, little bit of information. There's a site of Teutonburg Forest, sort of in the, in the heart of sort of um, Germany. Um, and um, Kalkaris, it's actually called. And I just, I just chucked this in there for a bit of fun, right? So what we're talking about there, so there, there we go. See all that purple stuff there? There's not a massive increase in the Roman world. Not, not really, just little bits. It doesn't massively increase. Um, it's all about the early stages and, and, and it didn't happen. So this is, this is an old sort of woodcut. Uh, this is a woodcut. This basically says a, a meeting of Varus with Germanic leaders um this this is from the i think this is actually a woodcut from the 1700s actually and and it's basically there's varus and and one of them has got to be arminius on the on the right one one have got to be um and varus is saying well you know are we going to be friends and they're all going yeah we're going to be friends it's all fine it's all fine nobody none of varus's other advisors knew what was going on they, they all they all hollow they all followed him hook line and sinker there was no indication that Arminius was a traitor really bad intelligence there in other words right it's a bit like a woman who builds up resentment every single thing you've done wrong to your wife every single thing you've done badly every single thing you've done wrong and you have this argument and she chucks it at you and she makes you feel really small right um but you didn't know she'd been building up all this resentment you had no idea she'd always smiles and happy and everything's fine right and when you're just about to go to that fun fair and you're just gonna have the day of your life right she brings out all that stuff and it destroys the day in one moment um, and it destroys your relationship. This is exactly what happened with Varus, except instead of the wife killing you, right? Um, Varus is killed. So Var Varus itself, do you know what? I, I, I had, um, I wanted to tell you just a, a little bit about this, this Varus bloke. I, I, mean, I, I had it earlier on and I just let me, uh, let, let me get that. I just had it on the screen earlier on. Hang on. Let, let me get that up there. I'm just going to get this. Here we go. Um, Varus, Varus, it said that I'm, I'm being unfair about Varus, really, because um, he was he he was an administrator, um, but he wasn't a, an amazing um, general. OK, it's um, how, how can that be? How can that be defined? Um, where's the where's the um, parallel? I, I, I think I think. Um, I think he's a bit of the reverse of Rommel, to be honest with you, in the Second World War. Rommel was a, was a fighting general, but he had no idea of logistics. That's why his campaign in North Africa failed. Varus had an idea of logistics, but he had no idea how to fight. Um, now, Var Varus, had been, Varus uh, had been involved um, in, in Africa, and then he went to Syria. Um, and it said by the by the Jewish historian Josephus about seven um, seven BC, the Jewish historian Josephus mentioned the swift actions of Varus against um, the Judean Jews, and with under under Varus um, with his with his with his with his army after occupying Jerusalem, he crucified two thousand Jewish rebels, and may of thus being one of the prime objectors of popular anti-Roman um, sentiment in Judea from then onwards. So in other words, not only, right, not only did Varus end up in the Holy Land and make himself unpopular and he crucified 2,000 Jews, which would be remembered by the Jews forever, right, 
So this is an important guy who really screwed screwed up the idea of ancient Rome, right? This 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 um this this guy this guy Varus um um stopped all hopes of conquering Germ Germany forever. Uh, and and, I, and um when I said when I said seven um AD, I meant seven BC, just just a little bit earlier than that. But but Varus and made made the Roman Roman Empire very very unpopular, very very unpopular, um in 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 regards to lots of these people there were good there were good roman leaders right there were very very good roman leaders but there were also very very poor roman leaders so so basically what 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 i'd need to do is just show you some more images and um do you know what i i'm i'm betting this was a two-hour class but it's not so i better shift on there's a coin with um the the head i think that's going to be the head of augustus and there's a stamp on it var Basically, governors would have a stamp on their coins. Um, they, they they would have um, circulating coinage, and they they would stamp with a governor stamp on the coin, right? So there was a little bit of I'm in charge of of this area, Tutenberg Berg Forest, um, in the um, spring months, uh, very misty, and that's where we're going to go next. So this is where we're going to go next. So. So basically, um, what we do see, and uh, let, let me get my let me get my little notes in here. The line of march was now stretched per stretched perilously long through the Teutonberg forest. Um, it was described by the Roman writer Gaio Cassius as a narrow, muddy landscape prone to violent storms. And the line of the Roman army, if there's 25,000, the, the line of the Roman army stretched 12.5 miles. So in other words, this is Bill, right, taking a group of 25,000 ramblers across Wales. Um, so, and, and you think Bill doesn't have any idea what the ramblers are doing at the back of the, the column, right? Uh, and this is basically what's happening. It was this state um, when it was all stretched out. It was, uh, Armenia said, "Come down this little narrow lane." You know, when I do my ghost walks, I say, "Never follow the will o' the wisp. Never go into this. Never go off the footpath. Never trust anybody." You know. So th this is this is what's happening. Um, and the Germanic warriors, armed with light swords, armed partly by the Romans, large lances and narrow bladed. Um, uh, short spears, they attacked the Romans, they rained down on the Romans. Arminius, recalling his education in Rome, Rome, understood his enemy's tactics. And you know what, guys? The Romans didn't fight in woodland and was able to direct his troops to counter the Romans at any, um, any moment, using locally superior numbers against the dispersed Roman legions. So in other words, what Varus was trying to do, don't let them get, don't let the Romans ever get themselves together in a clump, right? Make sure you keep them stretched out. The Romans managed to set up eventually um, a fortification um, and the next morning broke out into open country, um, continuing north. This is our idea. So in one day they were stretched out. They decided to build up a camp. And we'll have a look at that in a few moments. And the breakout was accompanied by heavy losses to the Roman survivors, as was a further attempt to escape by marching through another forested area as the territorial rains continued. The Romans undertook a night march to escape, but marched into another trap that Aminius had set at the foot of Calcaris Hill. Hill. Now, Calcaris Hill is slightly north um, in the Teutonburg Forest, as it's so described. And, and there was a sandy open strip on which the Romans could mark um they they couldn't really march and they were restricted by the hill it was a great bog and they hit up against a trap let's just uh, let's have a little look at some of this stuff okay we've got lots of images here so so you can imagine they're, they're walking through this this narrow sort of um they're forced it's a forced march a forced night march then over a few days um and and this is what it looks like in the summer but it's not like this um and then bingo they come up against this so you can imagine here we go boys we've managed to break out we're gonna head north why they bloody headed north into to alien territory i don't know any idea the best thing to do would, would have been to have um, headed 
um, obviously southwest or head back on yourself, right? But they didn't. They decided to keep heading north, which which is whatever. Va Varus would have been leading this army, so he was the one still may, maybe may not have been in charge at that point, right? But basically, the Roman army came up against this, and we've been finding evidence of this at Calcaris in the Teutonburg Forest. We've been finding this. They came. This is a reconstruction, right? Bang. So in other words, they, they, they were surrounded on all sides. In other words, all everything that everything that Arminius had learned about the Roman military, he used Roman military tactics against the Roman military, which which is the way things were going on. And we, we're now starting to understand that the, basically um, when it, it's quite easy to find the 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 Roman army going to the Teutonburg forest. Bits of it have been built on, but basically it's along the corridor. It's all along a corridor. And along that corridor, people have been finding slingshots like this, and they've been finding gold coins, they've been finding armor, they've been finding weapons, they've been finding swords, they've been finding all sorts of things. Well, I remember doing a full scale lecture on this ages ago. It was a, a two and a half hour lecture, actually. Uh, this is why you need justice. So, you know, all these types of things are being found and lots of little wonderful little nuggets like these golden coins. So in other words, what was happening is there was so the, the Romans, you can imagine, you can imagine that there's 25,000 Roman Roman soldiers and, and that some had their families and and so on and so on. And no, nobody survived. Any Anyone that was captured would have been tortured. Um, there, there was no, no, nobody was held as a hostage um they just executed you right flailing um uh, blinding um out, limbs cut off all these different terrible things um what we do know is when germanicus actually went back this this the the, the great father of, of caligula uh germanicus could have been a great roman general but he it was likely that tiberius had him poisoned which is um why caligula went the way it went um, Germanicus led another legion into the Teutonburg forest, and he was he, Germanicus was a was was um, he, he knew what he knew what he was doing right, and um, and when he when he led into the Teutonburg forest, um, he he saw that the bodies were still scattered around. He saw that there was there was there, you know people were still bits of bone were nailed still up on trees and 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 things bound to trees and all the rest of it. It still would have been there. Um, and he described this. He, he went into the Teutonburg forest to find bodies. And that's what he found. Bodies of his own kinsmen, bodies of, of individuals um, that he would have known scattered throughout um, heads on spikes. And um, I, I know I, do you know, when I look at history, I, I think about the, the damn right suffering of humanity. And I think about the I think at this point that uh, uh, the damn right pointlessness, pointlessness of war, but uh, as as the, the fear, the, the fear of the guerrilla is to be worse than anybody. And Germanicus had to be worse than the Romans. He he had to make the Romans fear him. He 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 had to be worse than the Romans. He had to be more terrifying than the Romans could ever be. And that message that message went home. And the, the Roman Empire would know that forever until it's very the last day. The Roman Empire would never come across anything like this ever, ever again, because it would always be remembered. So this is what allowed the German state to be and to survive and to be where the German state is, is today. They, they, they've, up, up near Kalkari, they've actually found these face masks. Um, this is actually a ceremonial face mask, which which would which would have been brought out. Um, but basically, you'd have had you'd have had a typical uh, Roman helmet, and this would have been. Um, this, I think this is a, I think this is a golden plated on on bronze face mask, um, and you can imagine, and they not you'd usually have them silver. Actually, they'd be silver face masks, you know, in all those Hollywood films that you can see. Um, and you, you would you would see you would see these and these are these were littering around. This would have been associated with one of the cavalry divisions. They may have had to add up to three thousand cavalry, but cavalry would have been useless in these conditions. Um, and 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 again, alas, it's it's the true tragedy. I, I, I you know, if I was on anyone's side, I wouldn't be on anyone's side on this one because I, I would have. Uh, whatever way you look at this, both sides were as bad as each other. And and looking at this, I remember when we had a 
a, a lecture and we were looking at the the battle, battle of Teutoburg Forest. This is this is Hermann's um, victory over the Germans. Um, and, and I'll start again. This is Hermann's victory over the Romans. Hermann being uh, the German. Um, and this is drawn by, by the Crown Prince Frederick William the Fourth of Prussia in 1813. This this is being drawn after the Battle of Leipzig. Basically, in other words, what 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 they're saying is that you know Napoleon. You you may be this great bully. You may be this great vic victor of of various campaigns, but you know you've just you've you've lost um, you've lost the um, um, the peninsula. You've lost the peninsula war. You've lost the campaign against the Russian Russians. And you know what? Now Napoleon, you've lost at Leipzig. Uh, it was the Battle of the Nations, and um, Napoleon lost at Leipzig. Um, and and the Germans took all the credit for it. They 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 deserve to take all the credit for it. Um, and this this is what they were feeling all, all the way back. They 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 weren't. And do you know that you, you see you see that eagle there. That eagle, more or less to the centre of the screen, would be the same eagle that one of the bearers of the flag touched by Napoleon would have carried. But this is in a different age. This is the same eagle. That the Roman uh, legions would have carried into Teutonburg Forest. It did lots of similarities there. Obviously, Napoleon didn't fight in the forest. That's the big difference. But it is the G Germans defeating a foe as grand and as great as Napoleon. So what what you what you can this this is a nice little plan. So what what we're going to do? I'm going to read some of my notes and um, so what what's happening? So what we mentioned is that if you follow that again. Uh, you've got the 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 line of march of the Romans stretched out from the right of the image to the left. Um, and what you can see is the camp that they established over there on the left. And the Romans undertook a night march to escape, but marched into another trap. And this this is this is really important. Now, what what we feel is going on is that the 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 Romans themselves um, came up against various defences against this landscape. You know, it, it, it goes to so if we look at this, the Roman column made up of three legions. Um, you've got the um, uh, auxiliary, you've got the auxiliary cavalry and the infantry, and it's likely the Romans would have sent the cavalry in first, and they would have been wiped out. A typical plan, and you can. This is just an idea. Calcaris high ground, and you've got the swamp. Uh, they're, they're being forced. Many Romans, bewildered by the confusion of the battle, fled to the north but died in the nearby swamp, and they, they all drowned and so on. Um, what, what, what? Basically, um, the, the Rom Romans were forced along another route. They, they. Um, what happened was that um, um, the likes of Arminius had time to prepare this. He had three years to prepare this. So the route way that the Romans should have taken was hidden, right? They should have gone slightly north northwest. In other words, they they went into um, they they went into this sort of um, there it is into this camp, um, and they they just couldn't escape. It, there was just no way out. So obviously there were Roman there were Roman soldiers that actually survived, but um, in in the thousand maybe two thousand at most, ones that managed to get out. Uh, because of the slaughter would have ju just been absolutely horrendous. The, the road was further blocked by a trench and towards the forest and northern wall had been built alongside the, um, the roadside, permitting the Germanic alliance to attack the Romans from cover. The Romans made a desperate attempt to storm the wall, but failed. How do we know this? We don't. And the highest ranking officer next to Varus, Legatus Pneumonius Valor, abandoned the troops by riding off with the cavalry. His retreat was in vain, however as he was overtaken by the Germanic cavalry and killed shortly thereafterwards. The Germanic warriors then stormed the field and slaughtered this disintegrating Roman forces. Varus committed suicide. And Valeus uh, reports that one commander, Perfectus Cuneus, surrendered, then later took his own life, while his colleague, Perfectus Egius, died leading his doomed troops. So it's it's quite it's quite a terrible moment. Um, we don't know this, but uh, Germanicus tells us the following, and he told Tacitus this. 
Tacitus wrote that many officers were sacrificed by the Germanic forces as part of their indigenous religious ceremonies, cooked in pots and their bones used by, for rituals, cooked alive in pots. Others, um, it's saying some some were ransomed, but I'm, my notes tell me that they weren't. But if uh, some were ransomed, it was very few. And it's quite possible that some of the average everyday bog standard soldiers, Roman soldiers, were placed into slavery. Again, we've got no real evidence of that. Um, the other thing as well is, um, this is a, all Roman accounts stressed the completeness of the Roman defeat. Now, this is interesting. The Romans don't, the, the Romans don't fudge it. They, 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 you know, they, they didn't try to make gloss of it. Oh, by the way, 30 men survived Islandawana. And you're thinking, well, we, we lost 1,600 men at Islandawana. You know, that, that's not, that's not an achievement. And uh, the Romans did something very different when they, when they looked, when they looked at this battle. Um, it was a complete defeat. There's no, there's nothing good to say about it at all. We lost three Roman legions. The finds at Calcaries of 6,000 pieces of Roman equipment so far excavated, um, but only a single item that is clearly Germanic suggests few Germanic losses. My notes tell me that there may have been up to 15,000 Germanic losses, but is that figure anywhere near the truth? Could it be only a few hundred? However, the victors uh, would most likely have removed the bodies of their fallen and their practice of burying their warriors' battle gear with them would also contribute to the lack of Germanic relics. So, fair enough. Additionally, several thousand Germanic soldiers were des deserting military men and wore Roman armor and thus would appear to be Roman in the archaeological digs. It is also known that the Germanic peoples uh, wore perishable organic material such as leather and less metal. The victory was followed by a clean sweep of all Roman forts, garrisons and cities. So in other words, Germanic um, Arminius decided to take vengeance. He, he was able to just sweep through. The remaining two Roman legions in Germania, uh, commanded by Varus's nephew, Asprenas, uh, were content to try to hold the Rhine. They did not go and do anything. Um, one fort um, fended off the Germanic alliance for many weeks perhaps even a few months after the situation became untenable, the garrus under Cadicius, uh, accompanied by survivors of the Teutonburg forest, broke through the siege and reached the Rhine. They resisted long enough for Lucius Nonius Asprenas uh, to organize the Roman defense on the Rhine with two legions and Tiberius to arrive with a new army, preventing Arminius from crossing the Rhine and invading Gaul. So in other words, this could, this could, have ended up with the collapse of the Roman Empire. So in other words, if the Roman Empire had fallen that following year, the Romans would have never come to Britain. They, you know, they, this, this, was, this was close on everything in Europe being very different. You know, um, people in France speaking German, um, the Germans wouldn't have come over to us, but you know, everything would have been, would have been different. Um, and let's just let's just have, finish off with some of these images. So again, this this is associated. This is the the memorial um, associated with Arminius. Um, this is um, a beautiful um, illustration from the 1800s by Caspar um, David Frederick. Um, and again, what I wanted to do, I, I was I was going through I was going through these little plans um of the roman empire um and i just thought I'd, I'd sort of bring this sort of up to speed so in other words what we're talking about is the romans didn't ever go any further than this blue line they did in the reign of marcus aurelius but they never ever held it um the only major achievements the only major major achievements of the roman empire after ad 79 was was this chunk of dacia which is modern day romania um, and then obviously under the reign of Claudius capturing Britain. But you can see that if you look along here, you've got three Roman legions in Britain. You've got, um, let's count them. You've got the um, Ninth Legion, um, the Ninth um, Hispanic Legion, and that will ring a bell. Um, you've got one there. You've got the 30th Ulpia. You've got the first Minervia. You've got the 22nd Prime Agenia, 
Um, and you've got the um, 8th Augusta. So you've got one, two, three, four, five Roman legions along this stretch of the German frontier. And you've got one, two, three, four along this stretch of the Roman Empire. So in other words, nine Roman legions along this stretch of the Germanic frontier, which would comprise, if we start looking at the map, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six down here, right? Uh, and you've got a little concentration in Turkey, four. You've got three concentration against the Persians, one in Egypt. You've got one in North Africa, one in Spain. You've got the Praetorian in Italy. So in other words, <coughs> the majority of the Roman Empire is in, in the northwest of the Roman world. This is where all the problems were. And it would always be like this because they never, ever dealt with the initial Roman problem in the first place. Um, the Germanic problem in the first place being a constant problem to the Romans. Um, now, what we then see is about 14 years AD, we've got a guy by the name of Germanicus, who, who is the father of um, Caligula. He is he is he is tech he is quite successful he's he's quite successful against um the germans but he's not into um conquering germania uh, he's basically into stabilizing the frontier this is this is what germanicus does but there's never there's never this massive invasion I, I, and um just to sort of give you a little bit of um, a roundup as well so uh, on on more recent finds um on more recent finds, what they're finding is associated with this Calcaris landscape. They're finding evidence of lots of banking that was constructed by the um, uh, under the orders of Minius. They do they 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 they're going back and forth to trying to work out whether they've actually find the camp, the Roman military camp. They, they, there's there's a debate whether the, what they found is either the remains of Arminius's work or the likes of of the roman work remember this is this is a, an event over a few days right it's 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 an event over just a few days so so finding finding the data this is in september the 9th over just a few days um and it's it's um it, it's 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 to find archaeology for such a short period of time which was used for a short period of time is is usually negligible in archaeology, but because of the level of human remains left on the battlefield and, and metal work and and the length of time, the three years that Arminius took to, to build these defences, they, they are quite formidable. Um, and lots is being found, lot, lots of coins and lots of other things are being found. And, and one thing I would say is that um, next week, we're going to look at a very different um, campaigner. We're going to be looking at the likes of Julius Caesar, and we're going to be looking at Vertingetorix. Uh, and then we've got Boudicca, and, and then for Bill, we've got um, Maximus. Not Magnus Maximus, we've got Maximus, the general of Marcus Aurelius, which would be really interesting to actually look at. So on that note, um, I'm going to ask if there's any questions. Um, so I, I need I need to take a little note that, so uh, just to make sure I've got. So next week we've got um, um, we've got uh, Verting Getterix, we've got Boudicca the following week. Uh, we will have Maximus. Um, so anyway, any any questions from you, Bill? Yeah. Um, yeah. First of all, um, Aminius, what an amazing double agent. How, how how did he convince Varus of all that? Does not show a certain degree of um, uh, what naivety on his part to put so much trust in uh, someone like that. Let, let, um, let's come up with a let's come up with a historical figure like him. Where, where's the, where, uh, have we got? Have we got? Uh, this is a really interesting thing. Have we got any other historical figure that did very similar to Arminius? Um, and he was so, so trusted. Is there anybody else like him in history? Well, there must be people on, on a smaller scale, obviously spies. They were double agents in the last few world wars. And then we know that. Going further back, I, I can't think of anyone. No, I can't. I, anyway, I, 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 let, let, you, let, yeah. Let, let's move on, okay? Um, on. What was the objective of um, actually taking three legions north into 
into Germania. What, what were they aiming? If, if they got out the other side of the forest intact, what were they there for? Uh, well, you, it goes back to our friend Arminius. He said that there's a tiny little rebellion, right? Uh, bring in the legions and help me quell the rebellion. Arminia said, I need a little bit of help to deal with the rebellion. The three legions? I, that oh. doesn't make sense. Yeah, that doesn't make sense. And I think it's status. No yeah, you, you don't take um, three legions into a forest like that, where you're all compressed into a fairly narrow advance column stretching out for, you said 12 miles, I think it said four on the, the caption, the perspective. Um, and how how could an how could they not know what was happening? Um, it was ambush, obviously. It was ambush along um, at the same time along a four mile column. So the planning of that must have been absolutely incredible. You know, to get it right. It's it doesn't sound true, you know. I mean, that it it, it 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 doesn't. But then but then then again, you 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 it's saw. Yeah, then again, you look at the you look at Islanduana, right? It it doesn't it doesn't look possible that the British army is wiped out of Islanduana by a group of people with spears, yeah, yeah. right? But it actually happened, yeah. right? And um, you know, it, it, it's um, you, you know, with with anything like this, the Romans the Romans would would never want to make this mistake again, and they didn't, no. right? They 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 didn't make this mistake again. Um, it was. Um, it must be one of the, the biggest military blunders of all time. I think you mentioned. It's got to. It's got to be pretty. Well, actually, yeah. alongside alongside Napoleon invading Russia. Um, but then, then again, there's no comparison because Napoleon thought invading Russia, um, it would bring. Um, it, it, uh, um, is Alexius, isn't it? He bring the, the Tsar to to his knees. That's what he felt. He, he felt that there would be an end result. It would bring the Tsar to his knees, and there would be a peace peace treaty, um, and um, everything would be fine. So there was there was a there was an end game, yeah. right? With this, this is far greater. Arminius would have had no idea that he would be remembered. Arminius is in fact Herman. He is the he is the guy who's going to be remembered forever for this victory. How did they both end up, Varus and Laminius? How did they end their uh, life, lives? Right. They... Uh, uh, well, Va Varus, Varus committed suicide, right? Yeah. And and and, and, and Minius, um, and Minius actually died. Uh, yeah, I remember now. And Minius died um, in twenty one AD. Um, Basically, the the, Ger the German coalition fell apart, and people turned against Arminius. They probably said, "You bloody, you bloody Romanized German, bugger off!" And the, so they actually turned against Arminius. This is what happened. Yeah. Okay, and um, another little question: um, the first image you showed showed the spread of the legions over the empire. Yes. With only the Praetorian Guard left in Rome. Was yes. That a full legion, the Praetorian Guard. Uh, uh, the the the. Um, it was always believed by the Senate not to have armed arm not to have a legion in Rome, right? So the Praetorian Guard was seen to be the Praetorian Guard was actually the police force of Italy. It was spread all the way across yeah, Italy, yeah. Um, yeah. you know. So it was the uh, <coughs> it was the um, start again. It was the is it, it was the militarized police, the Gestapo um, of of it of of Italy, and and the, and they had undeniable loyalty to the emperor um, and the senate but it um in numbers it must have been if yeah the patrolling they, police in all of uh it must have been Absolutely. yeah they put it this way if you spread this praetorian basically the praetorian guard was not in one area there were probably about a thousand praetorians around rome and that was it yeah. so uh the, the rest of them were spread out throughout the entire of italy okay and finally just a point of interest you mentioned this sanguana the Battle of the San Juana twice, and the film Gladiator. Um, at the start of the film, the initial battle between Germanians and uh, and the Romans. Um, before the actual battle, the chanting in the forest from the Germanians was were actually Zulu war chants. From I think from Zulu. Next time you watch the film, all right, listen to the war chants. Just, just before the battle. <laughs> Oh really? Yeah, you listen to it. They're actually genuine war chants from Zulu. But why not? <laughs> why not? Uh, well, I, 
Oh my god, yeah, I remember it, yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it, yeah, I got it. Yeah, it's in my head. They may have speeded it up a bit, but you are right, yeah. Yeah, as Michael Caine was saying, not many people know that. <laughs> exactly. I don't think he, is that one of the sayings that he never actually said? I think there's, there's a. Apparently he denies it, yeah. Probably. Yeah, yeah, that, that's, that's right, that's right. Um, okay. And Del. Okay, thanks, Carl. <laughs> so next week we know what we're doing, Del. <laughs> Absolutely fine. That was enjoyed. That it was good. No questions. Need to go now, though. Okay. Well, we're nearly I'll be back finished tomorrow though. with Jessica. Oh yeah, good old Jessica. Good. Well, that was received... lovely last week. Good, good, good. I, I, I yeah. know it was. Oh, except for Anne's face mask and uh, hand gel. Um. So uh, have a good one with Jessica, Dell. And um. Bye all. Take care, Dell. And and Richard, yeah. what would you like to say? And you got you, Richard. Now go on. Oh, really interesting. Good. I have about ten minutes. I miss dropping off. All right. Oh, oh, oh. blame me. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> I've already done three hours on Zoom this morning. I'm knackered. What What did you do that on? Huh? Gary Tiny. No. No, I had to do a Welsh Neurological Alliance. Three hour thing. Oh, that. Oh, that must have been bloody riveting. Yeah, it was. What were you talking about? The fact that the Welsh Assembly don't do anything for you, yeah. Crap, yeah, virtually that. Oh, yeah, me. three hours I'll never get back. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, uh, oh, that's true, that's true. That's what Dennis used to say when he used to come to Barry, he used to come to Barry and he used to go home. <laughs> so, uh, <coughs> okay, then, on that note, if there's no other questions, we'll, we'll see you next week, and next week we're going to be looking at um, the wonderful Verting Getterix and Elise and the siege there. Um, and, um, and, and actually, oh, yeah, I forgot we're going to do Julius Caesar in the future as well. Um, and, and that one, we'll have one left then, because that's that we've got another, well, we've got Spartacus, well, yeah, we've got one still to work out. Anyway, that's it. Okay, then, well, Bill, um, have a good one tomorrow and tonight with know. Jessica and Richard, I'll see you Friday. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. See you then. Take care, Bill and Bye. Uh, Richard. Bye. 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 So Bye. Long. So long. Yeah. So long. I'm going to go and sit with my turkey. So uh, I don't know if anyone was watching this out there, but um, yes, we 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 did that live. Um, and um, oh, hang on. See, so see, so got to there. Anyone? Anyway,